everyone, welcome to myself, Max McGillivray from Beanstalk Global. We support, educate and promote the international food, fresh food sectors to help them thrive and grow faster, not just fruit, fresh food. So this broadcast today is part of a series we're doing with Global Women Fresh, amazing group. Their mission is to change the status quo and leverage the talent of women in produce to close the industry's gender divide by inspiring, connecting and empowering women around the world. And their mission matters more than ever. Today, women account for 80% of purchasing decisions, but only 20% of the voices guiding decisions in the boardroom, would you believe? What's more is that by 2030, we'll need the equivalent of two planets to feed a growing world population of 10 billion people, half of them being female. Our industry has been called upon to feed the world more humanely, sustainably and efficiently, and more female leadership is a critical part of that answer. Therefore, Beanstalk Global has partnered up with this great group, Global Women Fresh, to create a unique monthly pro uh, broadcast interview series. This is to further promote the great work they do, to gain them more members ongoing, and hopefully gain them some additional sponsorship so they can take their, their aims uh, further forward. We're delighted to have next on the broadcast interview series, the amazing Michelle Redfern. We've just been having a, a great gig on our, in our little warm up green room in the back of Zoom. Uh, Michelle, as you'll find out, is an award winning advisor, speaker, MC, and facilitator, and based in sunny, sunny Australia. She has a portfolio of business interests that include being founder of Advancing Women in Business and Sport, Women Who Get It, and co-founder of Culturally Diverse Workforce, and a career that soars, which we're all going to find out about. Michelle is determined to contribute to achieving global gender equality in her lifetime, especially through her research for advancing women in the sporting sections and, sorry, sporting sectors and in the international fresh produce sectors. Michelle's going to discuss with us today how to network remotely better than ever before. It's never too early or too late in your career to begin to develop your web of strategic contacts. It's even more important right now to learn the art of remote relationship management. Michelle has an amazing, amazing international network, and she wants to demystify what strategic networking really is. So not just events and conferences and how it's an essential leadership skill for women's career success. Michelle, are you there in Australia? Come on in. <laughs> Here I am. Ta -da! Michelle, hello. So, so let, let's just do, do a, a, a time check because I, I, I love this. So if it's at eight, eight o'clock in the evening, my end, um, wh where are you if it's okay to ask in Australia? And what's the time with you? Well, I, I come to you from uh, Wadawurrung country, uh, which is the, the land of our First Nations people uh, in Australia. And that's the surf coast. So I'm in Torquay not English Torquay, oh, I'm wow. in Victorian, uh, in the, the, the Victorian Australia version of Torquay. Normally, uh, I'm based in the, the beautiful Melbourne CBD, but I've been, uh, been hiding out down at the beach for the last six months for right. a whole range of reasons, not least of which is this global pandemic that we're experiencing. Yeah, and, and are, are you Australian born, born and bred? What, what, what's your background? Yes, uh, dinky die, mate. Um, so <laughs> I was uh, born and bred in Western Australia. So, uh, and I often oh, say okay. to people, Perth is the most remote capital city in the world. And boy, is it what? Uh, and I moved to the, the beautiful uh, Melbourne uh, about oh, 20, 20 odd years ago uh, to pursue a, well, pursue my career. So yes, born and bred in Australia, a Western Australian. Okay, and, and here's a question for you. You're very, very well well travelled, as I'm sure we'll, we'll find out. Do you, do you think Australia is your is your home forever and a day? Or if I, if I could wave a magic wand, would you look to uh, reside somewhere else, Los Angeles, um, Switzerland, Paris, or is it it? Is Australia it for you? No, no. My my wife and I have always said that we will we will go wherever there's the well, basically wherever the spirit moves us. But uh, wow. so yes, we <clears throat> we do like travel and. Look, pre-2020, if, if, if that question had been asked of me, Max, I'd say, beam me up, Scotty, and I'll be happy to be placed in downtown Manhattan. Yeah. And because uh, New York is is absolutely, I, I adore yeah. New York. Yeah. Um, and it's, people have said, I'm, I'm a little bit like a New Yorker, I'm fairly forthright. So um, perhaps, perhaps, I don't know, something happened in the universe when I was born and I was plonked down in the wrong, the wrong part of the world, but I'd go there. Um, but, you know, I, I think we're such, uh, 2020 aside, we're such global citizens now um, that I, 
I could imagine living pretty much anywhere. Um, yeah, but but, but yeah. isn't there, isn't there some, well, not an argument, isn't the conversation to be had that because we've all, so in the UK, we're about to go down into another month's um, lockdown because of the pandemic, which mm. will probably get extended. I, and we're, we're sort of getting used to being homebos. Have, have you and your wife, have you changed at all? Have you, are you, are you actually enjoying being at, 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 a, at a comfortable home rather than having to travel around the world? Or, or are you the polar opposite? Are you itching? Do you want to get back out there? Yeah, interesting. I This is the longest I haven't traveled since I can't remember. Wow. So I, 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 I've got to say, as much as I do love travel and I particularly love international travel, I love the experience of being in another country. Um, I haven't missed the stuff that goes with travel and, you know, incessantly in cabs and, yeah. you know, dreary hotel rooms, not dreary, but, you know, they're, yeah. I'm often traveling on my own. So, you know, I haven't, um, I haven't missed that. I have obviously missed seeing the people that I, I would ordinarily see, including the, the terrific women of Global Women Fresh. Yeah. Gee, only, what are we now? November shivers. February, I was with them in yeah, Berlin. In Berlin. So, know. you know, it's, it feels, it feels like, a feels lifetime like ago. another lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're right, though. This, um, I, given where I live and the work that I do, which is across the globe, I am the, the wonders of technology, including what you and I are doing today, uh, has really enabled me to continue to do what I do for my clients and, and particularly for women and girls um, around the world. So, I what I've enjoyed is yes, um, not all of the stuff that goes with travel, but I've also enjoyed being able to create and maintain and even enhance my networks using technology, uh, which I think is a really important thing, uh, particularly for women, given that that's our, our focus of discussion today to to leverage and, and how to do that. So yeah, I'm I'm okay. Um, there are there are millions, literally millions of people. A hell of a lot worse off than me so no I, i'm okay no, well, well done and, and how, how do i voice this one there's um there's a, a company that was at um fruit logistica in in february and they um got a big stand and when i was speaking to them um earlier this week um they were asking me what what's my view of the fruit logistica event and i thought it was a bit of an interesting um uh, question and it turned out that they've already made a um a, a view that they're not going to attend fruit logistica for the next three years and the reason yeah. being is that apart from being a costly um uh, venture um they have very quickly found out that through zoom teams meetings um, they don't have to travel um, around the around the world for one day meeting, and it takes three days there to, and, and three days back. They, they're, they're actually being so um, so so much more efficient by using modern technology. And, and a, um, there's a, a contact of mine. He went out to um, a, um, a a tech conference in uh, Los Angeles last November, and he said that the, the thing that really got him was virtual headsets. So this is in pre-COVID. That he said, Max, in two years' time, um, when we're having a catch-up, you and I will both have a virtual headset, and it will be like we're in the room together. Um, yeah. Then COVID comes along, and th there's apparently uh, billions uh, going into investment into the likes of Zoom and other platforms to get them even better. Because what we've got at the moment yeah. is so, someone would, would view it as, as a bit clunky, and there's some things you can do and can't do. But can you imagine that in two years' time, having a virtual headset? So, so we, we, we might, Michelle, you and I might not ever have that glass of wine we keep on threatening ourselves with in uh, in, in New York. Mm. Um, well, that would be a shame. <laughs> but but we, do, we, we do it on a, on a, on a virtual a virtual basis. I suppose the only thing you can predict is change, and with technology, yes. trying to find a find a solution. So I suppose, I suppose in some ways, it, it's um, it comes to the subject of, of today. And I, I, I have to tell you, I've been I've been told off by by my by my buddies at Global Women Fresh because they they said, Max, you've got to have a hook. Michelle is amazing. You've got to have a, you've got to have something. <laughs> Thing to talk to her about and I said oh I don't know and, and I asked you Michelle what should we talk about and you said oh well let's talk about the subject I'm doing the big broadcast with with Global Women Fresh being how to network remotely so we've got that all set up and then the and then the um, ladies at Global Women Fresh go no Max you're gonna steal our thunder no but as, as we said if we we're not looking at all to steal um, the thunder of your big broadcast coming up with Global Women Fresh I, I think if anything it'd be great to sort of titillate the the, the sector yeah. so that they they know who you are, know 
how, how, how great and inspiring you are, then they can hear the full thing uh, when, when you actually do your, your broadcast with Global Women Fresh um, later in the year. So, so Michelle, how did you get involved with these with, with these eclectic mixture of, uh, of ladies from, I think last time I counted, it was three continents, might be five continents now. How did you get in contact with Global Women Fresh? Um, well, as, as we, we tend to do, uh, women kind of spot each other and go, hello, I think she might be okay. So <laughs> I was moderating, um, I, I work uh, and am in partnership with another brilliant um, organisation called Meet Business Women. Uh, and one of your English counterparts, uh, Laura Ryan, is the, is the brains yeah. child behind that. So I was working um, with the Australian chapter of Meet Business Women with their, on their inaugural conference. So I was the MC for the day. And one of the, the Global Women Fresh um, founders, Monica, was in the audience. And Brilliant. all I remember was this, um, so I'm, I'm very tall, I'm, I'm five foot 10 and five foot 10, you know, yeah. some shoes and what have you. I'm, I'm, you know, and she's this tiny little dynamo and yeah. she just came bolting towards me at the end and I thought, goodness, she's energetic <laughs> and she said we've got this thing going and I really want to get you involved and I'm going okay okay right um look let's just say yes and work it out oh, it's <laughs> so, seriously wow yeah and look the things that Monica said to me and then of course um sub subsequently when I met Julie um and Vivi was this is about all of the things that you said at the start we know that there's a, an enormous supply chain um from you know pretty much from paddock to plate, you yep. know, um, yep. fruit to fork, you know, all yep. that yep. all yep. that kind of stuff. So, and we know that there are women and girls in, in this system that are being left behind. And we know that we've got these challenging global goals that the mega trends around sustainability, being a food bowl, being able to feed our proliferating uh, population. And so they were talking about this and I'm going, yep, okay, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in, <laughs> what can I do, what can I do? And I particularly, I really, as you can probably tell, I do, don't do mind having a chat. I think I was born talking um, and I'm also pretty determined, which is something else my mother would say, oh, very determined child. And uh, so I became quite determined to work out how I could contribute to the goals of Global Women Fresh because quite simply it was so aligned to my own goals, my own purpose and what it is that I do to advance women and girls around the world. So I enjoy facilitating, I enjoy moderating, I enjoy designing uh, really great content as well as really great experiences for, for women to have a career that can soar and uh, have choices um, and I also thought, well, this is just, a, this is, a, frankly, it's a dreadful expression, but this is a no-brainer. Why wouldn't yeah. I get involved? So that's yeah. how it all happened. And it's it, it got me really thinking that when we set up um, Beanstalk, we, we wanted to be sort of philanthropic and that we wanted to run a number of um, broadcasts where we, we could um, uh, push key messages. And, and when we started Beanstalk, we didn't know where it was actually going to go. And I contacted Global Women Fresh to say, we've got this amazing platform and we'd love to get uh, um, involved with you and see if we can help, help in some way and it, it got me I, I always use the expression of the of the dog walk I got I got thinking on on the dog walk of all the conferences I've been to in the UK and internationally and how uh, what oh, Michelle help me with the expression it's not meant to be rude uh, male and stale um, how mm. and I remember, remember going to one in, in in Germany about 10 years ago there's was, was about 500 people and they were all white men all middle aged all in grey suits and the, and the thing that really got me about it thinking about it in, in retrospective is that the fresh produce sector is beautiful i have been i've been so lucky to as i bored you about previously i, I tra traveled through africa on a motorbike to to promote fresh produce and the people and the the produce is so is so glorious when you're stuck at a conference hall with 500 fat germans um, and there's no produce there and th there's no diversity and there's no no women in it. And, I, and I sometimes get so confused by our sector because our sector is so of fresh produce is so beautiful and mm. it needs to be expressed and if, and if anything um, I'm, I'm not the one I'm not the, <laughs> the one to do it as, as a slight slightly uh, dumpy middle-aged man we, we do need um, people who are, are passionate um, about getting that that um, that that story over so it's so it's it's well, Max, I, I'm going to challenge you on that, though, because you you are the right person. Because there's there's a whole um, 
there's a whole bunch of people involved in in um, gender equality, and there's a whole bunch of people. All of us are going to benefit from it. But as a as a gentleman um, who is Anglo Celtic or Anglo Saxon. Um, you you are the prevailing or you are the dominant force in most industries across the world so uh, like it or not my friend you have power and yep. what you're doing today and with with beanstalk global and your alliance with global women fresh is a is a perfect demonstration of male allyship and when and so this is the other part of the work that i do in fact interestingly when you said you looked out at, at this conference and there were 500 uh white men in in gray suits um i often look out at conferences and see uh, an array of women from different cultural heritages, uh, different ages. Uh, and I think this is terrific, but I'm kind of preaching to the choir. This is not my audience. Yeah. My audience, frankly, is that five group of 500 German men in grey suits. They are, I want them to become the allies and also to understand that gender equality is really good for blokes as well. Yeah, but to yeah. your point around the industry, the, the, the goals of Global Women Fresh and the industry more broadly, how do, we, how do we create enough food sustainably to feed the world requires innovation, requires yeah. creativity, requires a whole bunch of different thinking that you're not going to necessarily get if the, if the leadership in, in the sector at all levels is a homogenous group yeah. because that's when we fall into groupthink and, and, and it is likely... Uh, or less likely that innovation and creativity will flourish. It is yeah. more likely that it will be, um, well, it, it'll be curtailed. Yeah. So okay. that's that's why you're important, my friend. Okay. I, I, thank you. I, I'm just going to give two, two extreme examples. I, I think this the, the, the change is happening and the change is going to be rapid. But a month ago, um, uh, in, in my day job, I, I um, run within uh, this recruitment business at Red, Red Fox. A month ago, I got phoned up by an agricultural company um, in the UK, a pretty significant 20 million pound turnover. Uh, Max, we're looking for a, for a commercial manager. They need to do this, they need to do that. And I was dreading what they were gonna say because they've said it to me three times in three years. We need a commercial manager, Max, da, da, da. And Max, you, you know, we don't want a women because uh, women get pregnant. We don't want any women on our team. And I've now, I, I didn't before, and I'm, I'm, I'm really ashamed of myself. I didn't before, but we've, we've refused to deal with them because it's, it's just absolutely, and they're, and they're nice guys. They're nice guys, but it's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Last night, we, uh, uh, we did a, a broadcast with a, another uh, women's group, group, which is UK centric, called Women in Food and Farming. Um, and they had a great speaker there who'd done an MBA on um, uh, female quality in, in the workplace. And, and the main thing that she found out was that um, uh, women, when they came back to the to the workplace uh, from having having kids, um, that they were then on a downward trajectory salary wise in compar comparison to, to, to men. So that, that that's I just I don't know why I just needed to get that out. <laughs> a bit therapeutic. Well, you're, for, you're, you've, you've given a snapshot of the of the global gender uh, pay gap and the, and the inequity that that women still face yeah. and the mindsets that that people hold about about women and leadership. And you know, I I am a arguably a living example of how you can you can produce a couple of humans and still you know, do some good in the world. Yeah, you know, yeah, we yeah. don't we don't have a lobotomy when we give birth. So it's interesting yeah, about that. Yeah, anyway. but, but but again, I, I think those are just a very extreme examples, and I, I think yes. they will fall by the way. And I, I loved your bit about the the conferences that uh, that you attend to or UMC at that you're 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 preaching to the to to the choir and i think that's where this sort of platform and especially everything that you're doing with global women fresh um to just don't say shout about it talk about it be eloquent about it and bring these people with them and and um i sort of wrote over you in the, in the conversation um a bit about the, the the element that you were you were stating um about the the advantage some of the best businesses i know are run by women and they, and, and they're, they're completely all all, in, all inclusive um, they, there's, there's such a, a powerhouse, and then I, we, we got this uh, fantastic example of um, one of the biggest investing uh, pension funds in the UK, legal in general. Uh, they've stated to the, I think it's the 150 um, largest businesses that they invest in, that if those businesses by the end of 2022 don't have a diverse uh, main board, uh, legal in general, pulling all the investments out. Um, so you, you that, can imagine that it's interesting, Max, because we've got the same thing happening here with one of our largest um, 
funds who are part of a, a group of, of folk, um, so HESTA, and they have the 4040 initiative and the same thing. So Brilliant. investors have enormous power to, to make change. And interestingly enough, our superannuation sector here um, has a number of, of female CEOs. So that diversity of thought and being able to look at the at the wicked problem, but at a system level and say, yes, we can do a whole bunch of technical stuff, but what's at a system level, how do we invoke change? And I love that thinking. And that's what happens when you get that, when you get a diverse group, you get sparks of creativity yeah. and that's what we want to harness. Yeah, and, and perhaps that, uh, that uh, slightly gray man in a slightly gray suit as he's going up the elevator to his uh, uh, boardroom and he, and he sees the, uh, the new no notification about diverse boards he, his eyes right might roll around the back of his head but he then thinks well god i've got to do something about it and then when Absolutely. he does it it then fosters change and then a year down the line he can sit down and think actually that worked really well we must encourage yeah, more that, of this that, that, that wasn't so bad actually yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, I, so and, I, I, and it is interesting because compliance sorry max that, that no, no. We, it's interesting we, we can um go from compliance uh, into genuine cultural change and and you know yeah. people get a little bit bent out of shape about quotas I do too but for a range of reasons because quotas on their own are a blunt stick uh, and or a blunt instrument and and you need to do a whole bunch of other stuff around it but it's a signal to uh, it's a signal to board chairs and boards it's a signal to CEOs it's a signal to organizations that if you want to thrive if you want to flourish and sustain in really you know that the rate of change in business has never been greater, as we know. If you want your business to have that edge, you know, you think about Jim Collins, good to great, you've always yeah. got to be, you know, getting better, getting better and staying ahead of the curve. You need the best and brightest people. Yeah. And why would you want to lock out 52% of the population from that best and brightest definition? It's yeah. madness. So I'm an investor. Uh, I'm a business owner. Um, I like to make money and I know how to make money. And this, this is how you make money. Fantastic. So come on, let's get to this, uh, the, the subject of what we're really meant to be talking about today. <laughs> um, yes. net, so, so, so net, networking, it, is, is, there, it, is there a magic dust to it? Is, is it something that, that you, you can learn? Is it, is, it, yep. is it difficult? Is it e easy? Well, why, why do, why do um, you need to do it? Why, why? So we need to do it because, uh, well, my, my very, very pat saying is networking is working. And in an organisation, no matter what your role in the organisation, you have a role in helping your organisation grow. Now, it doesn't matter if you're in accounts payable, if you're in uh, procurement, uh, if you're in sales, or if you're in um, the HR part of the organisation, you contribute to that organisation's growth. And figuring out what your purposes in, in doing that and how you do that um, is, is number one. And every single person has an opportunity to uh, have an inside out, outside in uh, perspective when it comes to the work that you do, but also the networks that you create. And so the number one thing that, that I want people to, and particularly those who, who join us uh, later in the month with Global Women Fresh, uh, to, to get their head around is there's a mindset shift. Networking is not turning up to conferences. Hello, we can't do that at the moment anyway. Uh, it's not turning up to conferences and drinking average wine and, <clears throat> and deep fried canapes for two hours and exchanging as many business cards as you can. That is just, that is a mere, a mere shred of, of what networking is. But networking gets a bad rap because we feel like we've got to put ourselves out there and sell something. Um, yeah. So it, there's a mindset shift. So that's the first thing that, that I want to demystify what networking is. You and I are networking right now. If there's more than one person in the room, you've got an opportunity to network. And, you know, th th there's all sorts of different ways. And so, as, as I said, that mindset shift is, is really important. Sure, there are tools and there are techniques. My own story is that I... I learned very rapidly when I came out of one very large organisation that I'd been in for 15 years, joined a smaller organisation and was uh, acutely um, aware of my responsibility to help grow the organisation. And no one knew who I was and wow. I didn't have a reputation. And, wow. and, I, and I had a, a slightly, I, I think I had a bit of a snooty look on my face when it came to networking functions. Oh, how very, oh, you know, so... And I quickly learned uh, that unless I got good at 
creating networks um, and, you know, not a network of best friends, uh, a network or a strategic network um, of people who, who knew me, um, who respected me and trusted me. Uh, I wasn't going to be able to contribute to both my organisation's growth, but also my own growth uh, as a professional. So I learned pretty quick, and that's about 15 years ago, I learned pretty quick that I had to start doing that. Now, at the time, I was also still responsible for my humans that I gave birth to because they were smaller <laughs> than they are today. And I didn't like, and, and I was uh, solely responsible for them. So I didn't have the opportunity to, you know, schlep around to events all night, every night and do things. So I had, I had to get strategic and say, well, how do I, how do I have the most impact uh, in the time that I've got to deliver on the goals that I've set for myself? So the, the two things, the, the key things that I'm going to talk about later in the month is the mindset shift and then the goals that you need to set for yourself. And when, when you're anchored in a goal, it makes strategic networking um, so much more well fun. Done. Okay, so, so can, um, I was Michelle, not good. I am better. Can we, can we just rewind a bit? Because so, I, I just need to implant that virtually in the side of my head. Just re remind us again, the, the networking element, to, to have, to have a, a, a particular goal. So, so mm -hmm. if you know what your particular goal, I, I know. Um, in, I'm sure you've heard the expression before. In the UK, it's called red minis. Um, you start talking about red minis, and then you yes. suddenly start seeing red minis everywhere. So, if, if yep. my goal is to um, to get, uh, give an example, get, get more recruitment business, I've then I've then got it focused. And then I'm uh, on a Zoom call or or an email, or I, I see someone in a in a in a newspaper article. Ah, oh, they'll be interesting. I will contact contact them, and and so that that's my red mini. That that's taking me in the, in the direction I want to go. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's about being really really focused, and uh, you know, n networking as part of your work, not a thing. I'll, I'll do some networking now. The reality is, it's part of what you do yeah. every day. You'll be networking internally, particularly for those uh, those of our, of our audience that are in pretty large organisations, there, there'll be divisional divides and things like that. There's all sorts of opportunities to network. So really defining what networking is, is, is yeah. what I want to share to say, as I said, it's not just turning up to conferences and exchanging business cards. Um, the, the challenge of remote networking, I, I will be the first to say that if I had the opportunity to sit down face to face with you, Max, and have a yarn over a, uh, over a lovely glass of rosé, I, I wouldn't say no. Uh, but the reality is we can't do that at the moment. So how can we do it? Um, and we become more deliberate um, and we create opportunities. And if the opportunities aren't there for you to participate in, create them. That's how my, that's how my Facebook group, which has now got nearly 5,000 women in it. Wow. Um, 5,000 members, women who get it started. I couldn't find what I needed. So I thought, oh, I might just start something. And four and a half years down the track, I've got this amazing community, um, highly engaged, supportive, et cetera. So there's all sorts of different ways of, of meeting the needs, but that mindset shift has to happen first. This is part of my job. It's part and, of my and just, job. And how do I, I get just better? To, I, and just to um, emphasise one one point, I'm, I'm I seem to be coaching quite a lot of um, uh, graduates of, of late, and it's all. You, I'm sure you've got the same thing. It's um, it's clients who've turned into buddies, and as we've all grown, their, their kids are coming through university, and and, um, and some of them are struggling because they finished the university in the UK in, in our summer in, in July August, and um, they've, they've gone. No, well, they haven't been travelling, but they've they've gone and got some summer work to. Um, to, to, to get some uh, uh, food on the table, but now they can't get jobs. And so they're coming mm. to me um, because dad or mum has said, oh, speak to Max, he, he knows what he's talking about. Um, and, I, um, and I end up say, saying the, the, the same thing uh, to them about, um, you, what was that, Richard, what's that old expression? That, that, that thing on your desk with the curly wire, when we used to have them, um, a phone, when you use it properly, money comes out of it. Um, and the, a lot of these kids, they're just so used to um, uh, messaging through, through, through devices. Yeah. And to actually, so to, to emphasize to them that um, um, it, when we were kids and coming out of university and whatever, we didn't have any of this in the respect of so, social media. Um, uh, student, you've graduated, you've got so many tools. You, you just don't believe mm. how many tools that you've got to contact. And I suppose coming to this, this whole uh, networking element, I'm, I'm still quite surprised at how, um, not, not naive, but how underutilized some things are, like drum roll, LinkedIn. Um, so, so we mentioned mm -hmm. about um, 
so it's a, a, a magazine article and if someone was looking at a particular um, individual and 10 years ago you think well how would I ever get in contact with that person and now you can get in contact with them and if you um, engage with them in a in, in, mm -hmm. a, in, in a polite uh, respectful manner um, and also ask them um, I'm, I'm amazed when I when I do set some people off on a particular track if they're going for a particular um, opportunity and I suggest to them they'll reach out to that commercial director reach out to that MD we were all young once and they will know that you'll find they'll be very charitable the bulk of them will be very charitable and, and to a man so and woman they, 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 they're always um, always happy so there's so many tools that can be used um, properly to um, as that network strategic um, strategic and, and then I am so quite surprised how um Bulger, Bulger people, especially with likes of LinkedIn, some people seem very frightened about um, posting messages um, mm. about not, not not themselves or, or about industry comments. It's it's all, almost like they don't want to put the head of um, above the parapet. But if they do it properly and eloquently, it can raise their their brand awareness. So actually, you get it in reverse. People start networking with you, um, and then you like the situation. And this is how we came about. You you had lovely Monica uh, coming to you, and you just said yes. And, and, and look at the mess you're in now, talking to little, yeah. little, little old me. <laughs> and, and, the, the, and it's it's uh, it's it's that if you to me, if you can create that networking magic where people want to contact you because they think they might be able to help you or vice versa i think so so this is what you're going to major at with the absolutely with with, with, with the team and, and you've just fresh. you've actually just really highlighted that there's two things one is um there's a technique that we call the courageous ask so how do you how do you have a great so we do have someone's up a bit of courage sometimes yep. it's a bit hard to sometimes go, oh i'm gonna go and talk to a ceo holy moly how do i do that courageous ask um, but then there's also networking is about generosity and reciprocity. You know, there are so many of us, and, and when I say us, folks who have been on the world for a fair while, um, who are really keen to help the next generation and the generation after that get good yeah. at stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I find easy to do is to say yes to people who are really clear with me how I can help them. What I find less easy to do is people go vague kind of, oh, let's connect and have a coffee. And I go, I don't really do coffees unless there's a goal. Unless there's a specific goal, what, what is it? What is it that you really want from me? Because I'm really, really committed to helping women and girls, but I have to know how. I can't do that heavy lifting for you. So there's, this is the stuff that we're going to explore when, when I uh, when I work with uh, my fabulous friends at, at Global Women Fresh. I, I, do you think there's a oh, do you think there's a slight issue with the younger generation that that they're not goal driven? Um, that they are oh a bit a bit wishy washy, or, or is that me, me just uh, um, just just casting aspersions that it's it's. I suppose in a group of 100, you're going to get 95 who are uh, have a goal and you've got five who don't have a goal. Um, I, so I suppose it's a bit, it's a bit like, um, see what you think to this one, as to whether this is valid or a bit old school. Um, with the broadcast we did recently, one thing that came up time and time again was having a mentor. If you've got a mentor that, um, that they can actually hold your proverbial hand and assist you with what that goal is, when they then meet you, they'll then come to, to, to yourself and say, Michelle, hi, my goal is, can you help me get there? Because they sat with a mentor who has held their hand, walking a dog, face to face, having a copy. They've done that heavy lifting with them. Would, would you advocate people having mentors in, in, their, in their career? Most certainly, but I'll use the S word again, strategic. Um, so it's interesting because at the moment, uh, <clears throat> this month in a career that soars, as you can see on my left left shoulder, yes, that's left, um, <laughs> we are talking about mentoring and busting myths around mentoring because I get uh, a little bit bent out of shape because so many people, particularly young people, are so, so uh, raise your profile, get a mentor, and that's their career advice. You think, oh, well, that's yeah. super. What the hell do I do now? Um, and there is there are a whole bunch of myths around what mentoring is. Um, and, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that mentoring is not and should not be. But a little bit the same as strategic networking, which mentoring forms a part of. Um, it is If it's based in a goal and you're very clear about what you want to accomplish and you're very clear about the relationship that you want with a mentor and why, you will have much more success in securing a mentor that is going to help you reach your goals. But if you're wandering around going, will you be my mentor? Will you be my mentor? You know, like yeah. that little bird in the kids, but we are you my mother? Um, there's you're not going to have a lot of success. So, um, you know, I, I, I to, 
back to your comment around the younger folk, I think of myself as a, um, uh, yeah, what we would call today millennials. I'm, I'm not a fan particularly of demographic modelling in that I think there's just times of your life when you are completely and utterly self-absorbed and with growing up and becoming a, a, a more adult human, et cetera. And in your 20s, you do a shed load. I'm nearly, <laughs> nearly, nearly, whoops. Uh, you do a shed load of personal growth. You're, you're no longer a teenager. You're not really one of the big, big ones, the big kids, the big adults. And you're doing this, this bunch of growing. And there's, there's stuff that goes on in that. And, and you're forging a career. And you're probably thinking, oh, God, I'm probably going to, you know, find a mate in, at some point. And, you know, but there's all this stuff going on, so, which can be perceived as being goalless. Uh, I, I have such hope for our planet because of the 18, 20, 25, 30-year-olds, because they're cleverer than I am in general, and, and you know, I'm making massive generalisations. I think they're a lot more driven and savvy than I was at the Brilliant. same age. Brilliant. And as you said earlier, we've also got access to this amazing technology. And put it this way, if I can learn it, anyone can. And we can learn it and use it to help you know, create our, or fulfil our personal as well as our professional goals. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention two, two people without, without naming them. And I just want you to take, take a view as to who's right, who's wrong, or, or is it just the, 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 they should be happy as they are. One individual I've known for 20 odd years, and every two or three years um, on, on a recruitment perspective, they, they give me a call and say, Max, I um, really enjoyed this, this last job, but I've sort of hit my, my ceiling here. I've treated it like a project. Can you, can you just keep an eye out and see what the next thing is? And, and I've assisted them over the, the last 20, 20 odd years, and they're, they're now an MD of a, of a produce company turning over um, in sterling ooh, 80, 90 million, and, and they're, they're quite settled settled now. Um, but every three, four years, it was the, the same positive thing, Max, I've, I've reached a ceiling, what's the next thing? So that, that was the sort of mm -hmm. career progression. And, and I literally would not hear from them for, for, th uh, for three odd years. Go to the other extreme. I know an individual that he and his wife, they have the, um, the career mind map on their fridge door. And every two weeks they review it and they've got uh, um, everything they're going to achieve over the next two weeks and everything they've, they should have achieved. Over the, and they, they, they are very depressed if they haven't achieved everything they wanted to for the last couple. And they, they ring me up literally in, individually every two weeks or every month to say, well, we've done this. We're, we're trying to get to this goal in nine months time. Do you think this is feasible? And we want to get a bigger house in 18 months time. Do you think this is feasible? Michelle, give me, give me a hand. Who, who's, who's right? Who's wrong with that sort of career, career aspiration? Okay. So, so person number one, I would say that they've done themselves a disservice by not maintaining their network or their contact or their, their relationship with you in between times. So, you know, there's a, there's a great saying, when do, you, when do you nurture your network when you need it the least? There's a terrific yeah. woman here in Australia who talks about, she was a, a journalist and um, but, uh, posted in Washington, got uh, her job, her, her role ended and she literally had to find another job in 48 hours or she was going to get uh, kicked out of the States because her wow. green card or Okay. And she talks about the fact that her network was so strong that she could literally pick up the phone and say wow. to someone or a few people, this is where I'm at, boom, 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 all good. Wow. Because she maintained her network, which is yeah. so important. So person number one, I would, if I were giving that person advice, I'd say, don't leave Max alone for three or four years. I don't think it's respectful. Um, and I, I think I, I, I get a bit irritated when people pick up the phone to me after years and years and years ago can you be a referee for me or can you help oh, me I think, no. where have you been oh god <laughs> you know yeah. it's 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 yeah it's kind of a it's a little bit off but so maintain okay. your network and that doesn't need okay. to be difficult yeah. your your second uh, group of folks wow um i am not that planned now i'm a little bit like your first person i, I always in my corporate career, I was ready to move on. I, I like to go in and fix and get things ticking along, then find the next thing to fix and move along. So I'm, I'm a little bit like that person, ready yeah. to move on, move on, move on. So the other, and I didn't really have a career. Well, no, I didn't have a career map. I just knew I wanted to get to the top. That was it. Um, and I was prepared to kind of, you know, lattice my way around doing that. The, the second people, perhaps they're leaning on you a little bit too much. And perhaps they they need to take a bit of accountability for their own actions, and um, 
it feels a bit intense. <laughs> it feels a bit over the top. It, but you know, well, look, I, it's, it, everyone's different. Yeah. But, but Michelle, I don't. I don't think in that particular case. I don't think they're they're happy because they, they, that's all. They're just they're, they're just not. There's not. They're not smelling the, the roses. Or whatever the expression. I was going to say just, stopping and smelling the roses. Yeah. Have they, they, have they just got the head. Go, wow. Yeah. No, 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 no. They're just looking looking at these infernal post-it notes on the on the fridge. So 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 what 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 are we saying? If you if you're like like person number one, but just be a bit more strategic and um do the, the networking elements. I, I love that example of of, of your, your contacts and within 48 hours they needed to get a job and they got a job because of because of their strong yeah. network. It just yeah. as you as you say. When when you need your your network is is when you probably don't think you do need it, um, mm -hmm. and 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 again you only have to look at LinkedIn and uh, the number of um, uh, souls who are out there at the moment looking for new opportunities because of the yeah. the, the, the situation we're in, and and those with a stronger network, um, are unfortunately, rightly, unfortunately, will, are more likely to prosper because they've got that that strong network. And that network is so intrinsically linked to your personal and professional brand. And, and I, I don't pretend to be a brand um, expert, but I do, well, I, I've built my own brand. Even before I had michelleredfern.com, my, my own business, I had I was the CEO of my own self. Um, I, I wanted to be um, agnostic of, but linked to whoever was paying my wages at the time. I wanted people to understand, you know, my speciality is leadership and, and gender, now gender equity, but you know, I was a leader in all sorts of different industries. And, um, you know, I wasn't an engineer and I wasn't a scientist and I wasn't a doctor, and, you know, but my thing was leadership. So I wanted people to know that I am a really great leader of people and organisations. So that was what I built my reputation on. Now, it's not all smoke and mirrors. You've got to have substance behind it. So you've got to have a proven track record. Um, but you've also got to know that people are busy and they, how do you pack... How do you have people pay attention to you? That yeah. generosity and reciprocity. So LinkedIn again, Max, you know, I would be looking at your profile. Um, I'd be seeing what has Max posted. Uh, so what's, you know, Red Fox or Beanstalk Global posted in the last couple of weeks? How about I comment on it? How about I reshare it with some comments and, yeah. and say, I really like my network to pay attention to this. These are the, those are the generous things that, that we can do for people in our network that cost nothing. And it's a tiny, tiny bit of effort, but it also demonstrates that as a leader, you've got that generous um, outlook and that you're lifting other people. And then, you know, you're also you become front of mind for people for all the right reasons so there's all these all these little tips and techniques um, which as you said we've got technology that can enable it um, and that is networking you know it, it, I am a real fan of LinkedIn used properly um, and all social media has been extraordinary for, for, for me and for many other people and it is a real um, opportunity to demonstrate who you are as a person. Who am I? What do I love? What do I stand for? What do I, yeah. you know, what am I all about? And you can demonstrate that over and over again. So, yeah. yeah. And that, what, what I love about people like like you, um, whether it be face to face or on social media, you're so authentic. It, it does um, great me sometimes when you look at um, social media profiles, especially of companies, and it, it's just a very formulaic. Um, uh, regurgitation of stuff that the, the the and people don't don't want that. People want to engage with real people. All the, all the oh, high, sure high, high, high highs and lows, and, and you have to be authentic. And and, and again, you, you can't. Well, you, you you can, but well, you you can't. You can learn to be authentic. And to, to me, it's the environment and the people and your friends that you mix with because they're they're they're, mm. they're, they're the hard, your hardest critics. They'll tell you if you're not being authentic, and you'll you'll learn from that. You have some bumps along the way until yeah. you until you, you start to get that that messaging right. Well, my, my great view is that all of us are born with great BS detectors. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't know many people who, who don't, who can't, you know, can't spot a bit of BS. And, and look, we all see it. Um, and, and I think, you know, authenticity, much used word, um, less demonstrated perhaps. And, and I, I really want to help particularly women to, to be brave enough to be their truly authentic selves, because that's what People in business, we do business with people that we know, we yeah. respect, and we trust. Yeah. You know that from your business yeah. that you've yeah. been running for for a long, long time. Yeah, my clients do business with me because they can trust me. Yeah. They know me, they respect me, and 
you just can't pretend, you know, you can't make that stuff up. And where better to start than in, you know, practice on LinkedIn, you know, do a, a, my two tips right now for anyone who's thinking, oh, I really must get better at LinkedIn. Number one, have a look at your profile and just write in your career summary stuff about yourself. Who are you really? And yeah. if you don't know what to write, go and look at a few other people's profiles and think, oh, I like what they wrote. Um, and, and copy it yeah, but in your own words. Yeah, so yeah, number yeah. one, get people, if they can have a, you know, that top third of the, the real estate on, on LinkedIn about your profile is so important because people want to get a sense of who you are. So do yeah. that. Um, and please have a, a good headshot. Yeah, but anyway. Oh. Um, but, but, thank you. <laughs> no sunglasses, no down the beach shots, no yeah, selfies yeah. with a beer in your hand, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Anyway, um, but the other thing is go and like and comment on five posts this week five posts from, five from posts. people in your network yeah and, and i promise you won't die uh, I, seriously you will no one ever died from from starting to use linkedin um you will feel vulnerable i've got to tell you no one will no one will probably notice um but the person who has posted that article posted that that update will be so thankful to you. Think, gee whiz, so, you know, Max took the time to like my update, which was really important to me because maybe it was my first one mm. and I feel a bit nervous about what people are going to say. That's generous and that's networking as well. Yeah, and, and just from a, a, a career perspective, if, if you don't know how LinkedIn works, when you um, make, make a comment, um, the algorithms, the the, uh, the 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 magic dust within within LinkedIn, um, it shoots your comment to um, the top of the newsfeed. So if you have a HR director or a managing director who opens up the uh, the LinkedIn and they see that Brian Adams has made a, a comment about Michelle's post, and they say, "Well, who's Brian Adams? Oh, let's have a, have a look at him. Good grief, yes. we're looking for a Brian Adams. We must get in contact yes. with him." So that's it's Absolutely. not going to happen. It's not going to happen um, overnight. But the more fantastic advice from from Michelle, if you if you're um, putting comments on five posts this week, you'll go and, and LinkedIn will find you even more and more attractive and will keep on reposting your your, your comments so that your, your your brand is going out there. So people start to networking with you, whether it be for um, business development reasons or um, for, for, for career reasons. So uh, Michelle, uh, absolutely. Hey Max, I've just had an idea. Tell me. I think because we've talked about LinkedIn and how good it is, <laughs> they should buy us the wine when we finally get together. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! I can I can see some cheap cheap American plant coming 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 our way. Oh, so, no. so Michelle, we're, we're running out of time. I, I'm just going to ask two questions to to, to wrap up. In my yeah. opening statements, um, you want to see gender equality in your lifetime. Is that going to happen? The optimist in me says yes, and uh, I'm not going to die until it happens. So I will be a very wizened old woman, I think. I, I think we've got a long way to go. Um, the optimist says, yes, it will, um, but we have to bloody well accelerate. Um, the pessimist yeah. in me that I, and she comes out about 5% of the time says, holy moly, I, I, I think we're in a bit of strife. Okay, okay. But but with, with this type of conversation, anything that we all can do to, to, to foster yep. that, we're, we're, we're going to do. We're, we're going to give it a, good, a damn good shot. Um, you, you've got this great um, webinar coming up with, uh, with Global Women Fresh about um, networking, and you're going to go into uh, far more significant detail. Just, just to help us, Michelle, can, can we just cut to the chase on your presentation and get to the, the, the last paragraph about, about, uh, about the, your summary paragraphs, just so we can find out? Is that okay? <laughs> do you read the last page of a book? That's cheating. <laughs> No, they've got to come along. But uh, uh -huh. the reality okay. is that uh, you, you, it, coming along to that webinar, I will yep. not talk at you the whole time. You will be hands on and getting an opportunity to practice. So um, you, every single woman will walk away with a new or every single, single participant will walk away with at least one new tool for their toolbox to use. Fantastic. Um, and what we'll do is um, on um, uh, on the record of uh, Michelle and I's conversation, we'll put the link on for the uh, for the webinar with Global Women Fresh. So hopefully you've been excited about uh, meeting Michelle and also the, this full presentation she's going to do on, uh, on, on networking. Michelle, it's been, been fantastic having, having you on. What is your favourite fresh produce? Avocado. Yes. Fantastic. Excellent. And I um, know that Monica will be going, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Um, 
Michelle, this, this this has been been fantastic. I think it's been, been one, one of my best uh, best chats. Let, let's keep in contact. Let's keep networking. We can all learn so much from from the likes of Michelle and all, all the team at, at Global Women Fresh. Michelle, it's been brilliant. Please look out after yourself, and uh, we, we look forward to, to catching up with you later in the year, and also hearing the success of your uh, webinar with, uh, with with all the guys later this month with uh, Global Women Fresh. Good on you, Max, and thank you for being a terrific male ally. We need one hundred million more of you. No problem. I'll put myself through the photocopier. I'll go there now. Love it. Keep See safe. Bye. 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 Bye.